Of course, it comes at a time where there are really kind of dueling forces facing the industry, right? At the same time, you've got China's economy slowing, demand is obviously slowing as well. On the other hand, the pressure for de to decarbonise, to reduce emissions, is also looking very expensive. So how do you kind of position for that? Well, first off, it's fantastic to be here talking to you today about the journey of Fortescue. Uh, China plays a really, really critical uh, relationship partner for us at Fortescue, and particularly now as we're decarbonising our own operations, China will play an even more critical role for us in developing the renewable technology in solar and wind and getting that cost down to, to ensure that we can all decarbonise our operations profitably. How do you see the demand side, particularly with so many uncertainties over the property sector? Sure. I mean, we've seen demand... Um, from China over the last 10, 20 years be particularly robust for our product and into the future, particularly our product mix, we remain confident that the demand will continue to be there. And even at 5 per 6 GDP growth in China, on a much, much bigger base, we see continued robust demand for iron ore, particularly coming out of Australia. So you've talked about how that relationship can your transition, if you will, uh, into the future with more green energy, with more sustainable options. What does that look like in terms of the partnerships that perhaps are being explored right now? Yeah, so for Fortescue, we've been a, a very successful iron ore company. And 12 months ago, we announced a pivot into energy and technology sector. So for us, the partnership with China on both technology development, electrolyzers in particular, and driving the cost down for electrolyzers, um, pivots into our energy side of the business to get those projects at an economic basis so that we can grow that portfolio and help satisfy the global need for decarbonisation. Has the geopolitical side helped? I know that you'll be in Shanghai, uh, you know, to coincide with Prime Minister Albanese's trip. Has there been, I guess, a change in tone with the improvement of that relationship? Yeah, so we certainly welcome the change in tone uh, led by the Prime Minister of Australia. And you're right, I'll be there next week. Um, visiting in our operations there, 20 years successful operations in Shanghai, but also uh, with the Prime Minister next weekend in China. So we really welcome the warming of the relationship. We know that uh, Twiggy Forest is obviously an enormous pro proponent of driving the, the energy trans transition and it's almost hard to keep track of you know, the various projects, but there are, there's such a huge push into green energy, into hydrogen. Uh, can you tell investors when we could start seeing some financials and, and I guess the reasoning behind this? Sure. I mean, the pivot, uh, the, the early stages of our entrance into the iron ore market was um, there was a market opportunity that grew quite rapidly for Fortescue 1.0. Now, Fortescue 2.0 is seeing that same market, albeit the market in the energy sector, particularly green energy sector, we're confident will eclipse the resource sector. Hence, our quite active position on a number of areas that we're looking for. Um, in terms of the, the projects that we've announced, we're bringing a number to our board very imminently, and we're looking forward to announce some of those very first projects as we diversify our portfolio into the energy sector. There's also a lot of spending on, on you know, some of these side projects, but th there's still enormous investments, like the Grand Prix, for example, the electrification of the fleet. What's the rationale behind, I guess, the, the, the early adopter move on that? Sure. And let me just talk a bit about the acquisition of Williams Advanced Engineering. Really wasn't an entrance into Grand Prix. Um, the Williams Advanced Engineering team are probably the, the planet's smartest brains around the Formula E racing circuit. Now, that technology uh, is so critical for industrials like us to help decarbonise. The parallels between motor racing and mining we found are so strong, so those skills are easily transferable. Now, for us, the mining industry has been largely conservative in the way that it approaches decarbonisation. So many of our critics would say that what we're trying to do uh, really can't be done because the technology doesn't exist. We bring a group like Williams Advanced Engineering into our portfolio and some of those problems which seem like climbing Mount Everest actually aren't real problems and a lot of that technology that we need is off the shelf in other industries so really for mining the call out is look to the side and see those problems uh, as opportunities work with entrepreneurial small companies like we have here at Armark and get on with it it's not that difficult and uh, the progress we've made in the last 12 months from when we announced our plan 
to now having a real zero scope one and two uh, plan by 2030. We're in a much um, better position 12 months on now to be confident that the technology on a generation, the distribution and the consumption, so trains, trucks and ships, actually already exist, uh, making our aspiration for real zero absolutely within sight. That does sound like it necessitates big spending at a time when costs are also rising, right? Can you tell us about how the inflationary environment has really played out? Because we've seen not just Fortescue, but across the big four miners, that production has come down and break-evens have risen pretty significantly. Sure. So Q1 is not a good indicator for long-term production. In fact, year-on-year year, Q1, our results have been in line with our previous years. And again, we're forecasting another record year of 192 to 197 million tonnes of iron ore from our operations. Uh, in terms of the cost aspect, um, and I'll come back to decarbonisation for, for a second, because we believe that our investment in decarbonisation, it makes good economic sense on top of good planetary sense. So for us, ridding ourselves of 700 million litres of diesel over the coming decade, which is what we burn every year, by the way, in fact helps our position to sustain as the world's lowest cost iron ore producer. What's the timeline? Timeline, we've been uh, quite vocal about that. 2030 will be real uh, zero, scope one and two emissions. But you'll start seeing real activity, so the new range Does of scope trucks. Does accelerate that? Well, well, Fortescue loves setting an ambitious stretch target. Um, so we're internally working at a more aggressive target to change our fleet out. Uh, and two weeks ago, we launched the first uh, production-ready haul truck, a battery electric haul truck, which is really revolutionary in our industry. And that'll mark the centrepiece of our transition to a decarbonised fleet.